think it's considered stealing. Bring like a little travelo thing and then just pump out a little bit to try it. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Megan Lee's Instagram stories. So I have been getting so many messages lately um, that you guys are asking if I have a P.O. box, like you want to send stuff to me for the baby or... Okay, stop for a second. When an influencer says, I've been getting so many messages about whatever, do we even believe them at this point? Or maybe you have like um, a small business. I've gotten so many messages like this. I don't have a P.O. box anymore. I do have a registry, like I'm registered at Bye Bye Baby and Target and whatnot, but... Look, it's your money. If you wanna buy an influencer a gift for their baby, you can do it. But influencers are paid well. They make a lot of money. Why do they need their viewers to send them things? And why do they ask their viewers to send them things? Obviously, I'm not asking for anything. I've just been getting so many messages lately, like, I really wanna send you something for the baby, or I've been really wanting to send you something. Do you have a PO box? Like, I get messages like that a lot. She's definitely asking for you guys to check out her registry and send her some things because she's on Instagram stories addressing this. If you get a DM and someone asks you, hey, do you have a registry or whatever, respond to that DM. But because she's on her stories addressing this, talking about this, telling viewers how to find her registry, she linked her registry, so it definitely feels like she's asking for things. Also, if you have a small business and you sell baby products, um, let me know. I, I'd be happy to share that. Uh, See what I mean? She's definitely asking for things because she's saying if you have a small business and you have baby products, send me some products and I'll share them. Um, I just thought I would throw that out there because I don't normally just like give my address out. When I had a P.O. box years ago, it was just so hard to keep up with all my mail and they would get very annoyed with me because it was constantly overflowing. Um, but I always like appreciated just getting like letters and stuff. It just, it became too much. So I just. It became too much because you were getting too many free products. See, influencers get so many things for free and they're paid well. I stood away with the PO box. Um, obviously if you were to send me anything or get anything for baby girl, I would obviously give you a shout out. What did she just say? She'll give you a shout out if you buy something off of her registry? What? See, that is you asking for gifts because you're saying, send me a gift and I'll give you a shout out and I'll pay you back by giving you a shout out. Come on, Megan. And send you a personal thank you. Um, it just, it gets way too overwhelming when I have like a public address you know so i went to bye bye baby to check out her registry she registered for a 159 dollar baby care large baby play mat in happy village this is a mat that you lay on the floor and it looks like you can push little cars around on the mat this is clearly a gift for kaden she talks about all the time how he's obsessed with cars why is this on your baby registry it's just odd to me that she sits there and says, oh, I'm not asking for anything. But then she says, if you send something, I'll give you a shout out. Girl, come on, you're clearly asking for things. If you need things for your baby and you want your viewers to send you things, that's fine. Just say what it is. Don't act like you're not. I get super depressed when none of your clothes fit because you're pregnant. I swear, I cry like every week just trying on clothes. And I know I just got maternity clothes but I literally only got a couple pairs of jeans and I don't wear jeans every day. But I'm just struggling with this growth all over my body. I'll be honest, I don't even know what to say about that because it's obvious she struggles with body image issues and I don't know, that's hard for me to comment on because everyone has their own experience with that. But yeah, that's just hard to listen to. It's hard to hear her struggle like that. It would be hard to hear any mama struggle like that. And my acne is not going away. And this girl is just like stripping me of all my beauty. We got no glow. <gasps> oh my gosh. I recorded these stories a while ago, but I'm just listening to them again. I forgot what she said, but that is so sad to hear her say that. Because I think pregnant women have such a beautiful glow. 
And the fact that she can't see that in herself is so sad. I got a lot of messages yesterday. There was a mix of many people who totally agreed with me and knew how I felt because they're currently pregnant. And I'm just sharing normal, you know, pregnancy hormones and the emotions that you go through during pregnancy. Um, but it doesn't mean that I'm being insensitive to people that can't get pregnant. I think you guys, some of you, take things to the extreme. It's so funny when I hear an influencer say that because I want to say to them, yeah, this is the internet. People definitely take things to the extreme. You're also never going to make everybody happy. If you put a post up, some people will agree, some people won't agree. I mean, it's just the way it works. But influencers seem bothered and confused when a lot of their viewers just don't agree with them. And that's definitely interesting to me because when I put something up on social media, I never expect 100% of my viewers to agree with me. They're, that's just not possible. So when you're an influencer, I think you just have to change your expectations and expect and allow other opinions and don't be bothered by them because everybody has an opinion. And... It's just really annoying that like I feel like I can't even share a simple feeling of pregnancy without you know getting bashed for it I don't know it's just it's really sad the way social media is now you think you're getting bashed but that's because you perceive it that way it's so interesting all of these YouTube moms have been on social media forever how long has Meg been on social media like eight nine years and she still can't handle it. She still can't handle the comments, the opinions. And I'm not trying to downplay the hate on social media because I know there's a lot out there and I know it's difficult to deal with, but there's also a lot of people out there just giving opinions and they're not being hateful about it. And I 100% believe that social media being a public figure is not for everyone. It's not. And social media has changed so much since she started YouTube. If she had a regular job, your job may change over time as well. And so you have to look at your job, your current job, and say, is this still for me? Do I enjoy doing this after all of these years? And if you need to make a career change, make a career change. Or hire someone who can help you with your social media job. Since it's changed so much, the internet is constantly evolving. So if you're on social media, it's your job, you have to evolve with it. Your body goes through so many changes and your hormones are insane throughout pregnancy. I cry over the littlest things and it's just because I'm pregnant and I like can't control my emotions. Um, yeah, I just, it just sucks that I feel like I can barely share anything anymore of just like real mom shit and real feelings without being like, well, you should just be grateful because you're pregnant. Like, of course I'm grateful. Like, of course I am happy to be pregnant, but that doesn't mean that I can't have a bad day. Like, anyway. Um, so again, you can definitely share on social media. You just can't be bothered by the reaction of your viewers. I mean, or you can continue to be bothered by other people's opinions and let that ruin your day, your mood, your happiness. And look, I get this is easier said than done. I've been covering YouTube moms for almost two years now. And what I have learned is viewers love an unbothered influencer. <laughs> they love it. Yeah, so I like debated on deleting those clips of talking about how I, you know, am upset I can't fit in anything and don't feel confident, don't feel pretty. But no, I'm not going to delete it because, like, it's just ridiculous the way that people portray things. I don't think it's ridiculous the way people portray things because everybody is going to take whatever you say differently based on their own life experiences, based on their own trauma, based on the relationships they've had in life. So I don't think it's ridiculous. I really don't. If you're a public figure, I mean, you just have to get used to all the different opinions and feedback coming at you. I'm not saying you should tolerate harassment or bullying. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying opinions, reactions, we all have them. And social media is a place to share. It's a place for viewers to share as well. 
I think influencers only want their voice shared on their platform sometimes, but I think viewers should be able to give their opinions on things as well. I like the grapefruit one too. It's a little bit more peachy. The rose is a really nice, like natural kind of mauvey pink. I also have guava, which is, sorry, it cut out. Um, The guava one is pretty much clear, but it has sparkles. Okay, Meg, can you please stop this crap? How are we supposed to see the color of this lipstick you're showing us when you have a filter on? Come on, can you make sense of that? Can you please stop doing this? You can't sell beauty products while wearing a filter. We can't see the true product. Sparkle to it, like a little shimmer to it. But here are the colors that I have. And then, like I said, I do have a clear one. But I really want to try more colors because I just love them so much. I wish I could have them in every single color. They also have the plump version. Also, where's your affiliate link sticker on this post? If you post an affiliate link, you're supposed to let your viewers know it's an affiliate link. This comment says, why do you continue to be an influencer if you don't want to film anything or share your life? Kind of makes me laugh. Um... I still think you can be an influence to people and be like on Instagram and stuff and still have a private life. There's a lot of people that do do that. I think we all choose to share what we feel comfortable sharing and I spent majority of my YouTube career sharing my life so I understand like where you're coming from but I can still, have, I can still choose to have some parts of my life private and I think that that's like the freedom of being on the internet too is you pick and choose what you want to share. I do agree with what she's saying. You can definitely have a private life and be an influencer, but she started her social media journey sharing so much of her life and she's continued to share so much over the years. She's making a huge change to her platform, to her content. And well, some people are not going to like it and some people will. It's hard to make such a huge change to your content and still get the same views you were getting before. That's hard because you have some viewers who have been here from the beginning expecting the same type of content and you just completely changed everything. Yeah, rhinitis is horrible. I just feel like it's so suffocating feeling and it makes me really anxious because like just imagine not being able to breathe out of your nose um, and it just disrupts your sleep. It just sucks. It really sucks. I also have like PTSD from just how congested I was with Caden. So I have like in my mind like known how the congestion like feels and how it doesn't go away and just like take medicine or like do some remedies. So it's like, it's making me go insane. Um, Here's the definition of PTSD. An anxiety disorder that develops in reaction to physical injury or severe mental or emotional distress, such as military combat, violent assault, natural disasters, or other life-threatening events. A viewer said, can you please make a video addressing Megan Lee joking about PTSD today, saying multiple times she has PTSD because of her swollen membranes. She got a lot of backlash about it and was crazy rude in her apology and blamed her subscribers for taking it the wrong way. A viewer sent Meg this comment, do not use the term PTSD to define a symptom you had from a baby you decided to make. There are people in the world that have seen and been through things you couldn't begin to imagine in your privileged life. Meg responded, she said, I swear, sometimes I wonder why I even share anything anymore. I did not mean literal PTSD as the actual disorder. And sorry if I offended anyone by using that term. I meant it jokingly. Some of you read into crap way too much and it's annoying to even share normal day-to-day -day life. Oh my gosh, her apology is so cringy. The fact that she said she used the term PTSD jokingly, she just made this 10 times worse by saying she was joking around about PTSD. I watched her Instagram stories. She did not seem like she was joking around about that at all. So now she's coming across as a liar. Plus, who jokes around about PTSD? Then she posts this. Also, can we normalize that not everything in pregnancy is sunshine and rainbows, and it's not okay to be joyful and cheerful every day while pregnant. Pregnancy is hard and tough on the body. I've never thought anyone who has complained about anything in their pregnancy makes them ungrateful and miserable. Growing a human takes a toll on you mentally and physically, but also an incredible blessing and miracle. 
If you are that person who expresses negativity towards any pregnant woman feeling whatever they are feeling, reflect on yourself. I promise you that it's no skin off your back to take your negativity elsewhere. Like I mentioned before, Meg has completely changed her content and a lot of her content now focuses on her mental health. And she does complain a lot about life in general. I know when I tune into her stories on Instagram, it's going to be some type of complaining, some type of medical condition, or she's trying to sell me something while using a filter. I think Meg definitely has the right to express herself on her platform, but she could also reach out to a professional to vent to, to get some of these things off her chest, because I do think she uses social media as a place to vent and as a place to talk to people because she does seem a little lonely sometimes. Meg recently did a Q&A. Someone asked, what do you wish you could change about your life right now? She said finances, marriage resolutions, and a cure for anxiety. This says a lot right here and I think she's struggling in a lot of different areas in her life and she uses social media as a place to vent, almost as therapy, you know? And I don't think social media is the right place for that. I definitely don't. I'm not saying that she shouldn't open up and share her feelings because she definitely should sometimes. But just be strategic about your content because it is content. You're just sharing your life, but it is content for viewers. Do you think Megan uses social media as like a therapy session, as a place to vent and share about her struggles and mental health? Do you think she does that too much? And do you like content from influencers where they're complaining about their life and job? Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Make sure to click on these thumbnails for more videos on these YouTube moms.